At this point, it seems like everyone knows who Daniel Larson is. We've reached the fourth installment in this docu-series, and if you're here, you're likely familiar with Larson, his background, his controversies, and how we got to this point. He essentially needs no introduction. On the off chance that this is your first video about Larson, please keep in mind that this is part four of my extensive docu-series on Daniel. I highly recommend watching the first three parts to be able to properly understand as well as contextualize many of the events and people in this video. With all that said, get ready for the most high-stakes chapter in the series so far. Given recent events, we might have officially entered the endgame. Daniel's relentless antics, dramatic meltdowns, and displays of instability have predictably worsened, and it seems like his threats have solidified the end for him. So how does the final saga of Larson's public life play out? This video will explore the events that led up to the inevitable conclusion of Daniel's story. This is the Daniel Larson Documentary, Part 4. On December 15th, Daniel created a new TikTok account at Daniel Larson Work 24. However, it was the events of the next day that truly stood out. On that day, Daniel visited a Denver IHOP restaurant, fully aware that he would be unable to pay for his meal. After finishing his food, he lingered for an hour waiting for his management to cover the bill. The frustrated server, who had stayed well past the end of her shift to deal with Daniel, pleaded him to pay as she was eager to return home to her children. Daniel, seemingly indifferent to the server's predicament, maintained that someone would pay the bill through an app, a story he had been repeating for the past hour. <laughs> Listen, I don't think you understand. I can't go home until you pay your bill. I said I was going to be paying it online. I have somebody else that's going to be paying through the app. Okay, but you said that almost an hour ago. My shift's been over for almost an hour. Yeah. I really want to go home. Right, but the man, the other manager called the cops, so I'm waiting for them to show up now. No, you can pay your bill so that I can go home. Well, I now have to wait for the cops as well. No, you well. don't have to wait for the cops. You can pay your bill and the cops don't even have to come. As the situation escalated, Daniel argued with the server telling her that he would pay the bill if they called off the police. She agreed and walked away, but the police eventually arrived, notably the same officers who had handled the previous Olive Garden incident. But I thought they were already on their way, so what is it? I have no idea what it is. All I know is I really want to go home, and you're preventing me from getting my children into bed, and that really sucks. I was supposed to be home an hour ago. Okay, then I will pay the bill if they call off the police. Okay, well, let's make sure that happens, and I'll go talk to my boss for you. But can you make sure that happens? Yes, thank I, you so I, much. I will I work on that for you. Okay, thank you. Hopefully, that went through that way. And then I can't figure out how to send pictures through DMs. So I'm working on the payment right now. That's what I'm doing. So. People, like, literally just need to learn that, like, I am a celebrity. All of my business is done online. That's where you pay that link. And then... Ha ha ha. 
Okay, everyone got him. Paid now. <laughs> okay. And now I would ask about the other mill, too. <laughs> From last time. Mm-hmm. I'll show them. Let's see, there's 175 people in this chat right now. Everybody donate $50 to this place. That'll teach them a lesson. Get them some Daniel Larson magic. I do, yeah. Yeah? What's going on today, man? So, I had somebody somebody paying, and the IHOP wouldn't let me. I'm, I'm sorry, you guys, you guys, I have people talking about yeah. your... Oh, sorry. I I'm, was going to have somebody else pay, Okay. and the IHOP wouldn't let me, and so they called you guys. Gosh. Okay. So that's what I'm working on, and then they told me to leave after they've already called the police. Sure. And then I told them as since I'm self-employed as well, I should stay until the police show up because if I leave and they've already called, it doesn't make sense. Sure. I'm looking at it from that perspective as well. Oh, sure. So yeah. Are you I'm, live streaming today or not really? I am, um, but if they told me to leave for that reason, then I would. Not bad. Yeah. I was just curious because last time I... And I'm, on, I'm only recording because the, they called the police. If they didn't do that, then I wouldn't I wouldn't call. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't go live. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Okay. What's going on? Or my partner will. Um, can you remind me? Your uh, yeah. date of birth is... Uh... It's 11-15-1998. Uh, In a shocking turn of events, they allowed Daniel to leave without paying. However, on the condition that he never returned to that IHOP location ever again. Once again, Daniel managed to escape the consequences of his actions, further fueling his delusions and reinforcing the belief that he would never truly face repercussions for his behavior. Trespass you if you're not willing to leave on your own. So are okay. you willing to leave on your own? I'm willing to leave on my own um, if I would just need the paper of trespass. So you want us to issue you a paper trespass? Um, whatever they want. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're they're willing to just let you go if you're willing to leave. That's just what they've wanted. If, okay. If you're not willing to leave, that's a different conversation, right? Right. Um. Let me see real quick. Our. I'm gonna check and make sure, because if 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 this other person is willing to pay for my bill, then I will get the bill paid, and then so that's what I'm gonna check. Okay, I'll give you a couple of minutes to check and see if that's possible. Okay. The person's calling in right now. How many people do you have watching your stream right now? Um, 277 people. 277? Yeah. What'd you order? I ordered, um... I ordered a uh, chicken quesadilla and omelet. It was. Yeah. Lucky you. I haven't eaten yet. I'm so hungry. Okay. So, whoever called? Is not actually paying the check. It sounds like it might be too much. Okay. okay. So the restaurant, they're willing to let go without paying as long as you don't come back to this location. Is that uh, agreeable to that, you? That's agreeable. Can I get like a, a paper that states that by chance? I'll or? Sure. Okay, thank you. We'll do that. Just for company, I have to. It's Daniel, right? Uh, yes. 
Last name? Larson, L-A-R-S-O-N. What's your date of birth, Daniel? 11 1998 98? Yes. Yeah. The following day, December 17th, saw Daniel engaged in a conversation with the police outside a Buffalo Wild Wings restaurant. He also confirmed that his new YouTube account, Daniel Larson 24, was indeed his. The YouTube account, Daniel Larson 24, is my new YouTube account. However, his troubles continued as his phone number was leaked in a comment on his TikTok. Although he quickly removed the comment, the damage had been done, and the community now once again had access to his phone number. Daniel, in a characteristic display of delusion, blamed the leak on Grace Vanderwall, claiming that she had become annoyed with him. Sorry guys, I'm getting word that Grace Vanderwall leaked my phone number because I blocked her because she wasn't following the rules set by my probation officer, so she got angry and doxed my number to her fan base. On the 18th, Daniel announced a fan meetup at Washington Avenue in Golden, Colorado, where he planned to charge $20 for unlimited pictures with him in an attempt to raise money. En route to the event, he went live on TikTok, attempting to dispel the accusations that had surfaced in wake of the leaks. Nope, I don't have a warrant out of Boulder. There is no warrant at all. For the past three years, again, living on the street, like no joke, for the past three years, rain, snow, shine, whatever, winter, summer, I've been living on the streets. And I can say, it's not fun. Well, so people banned, like my fans, trolls, have banned all of my apps. I constantly have to make new, new accounts. So because of that, I can only do like in-person cash donations now which is fucked. It's completely fucked because the trolls, the uh, impersonators, the haters, you know, they did that to themselves. You know, they did that to fuck with me. And I have to say that that's not okay. That's never okay. So, I do everything cash now. I am not allowed to talk about Brianna at all. First of all, anybody who's claiming that, I will say this, not Brianna. So, it's somebody trying to impersonate, trying to escalate bullshit. Um, because I know the rules of the disability housing. And, um, yeah, you're not supposed to, um, that would be a violation of their rights. And a lot more than just that. That would be sexual assault. Like, <laughs> like, people need to fucking realize that at that time, everybody in that household considered me family. You know, I was like a big brother, you know, we just like, you know, friends at, you know, in high school, college, elementary school, no matter, no matter your fucking age, excuse my language, but no matter the age, right, people roughhouse for fun. And that's all we were doing was roughhousing. Even, even the providers knew about it <laughs> at the time. <laughs> so, I mean, they weren't even concerned. Let alone the providers used to roughhouse me, so. 
the entire video <laughs> that got posted, where on the entire video does it... <laughs> like, people need to open their fucking eyes. His efforts proved ineffective in the eyes of many viewers, and he abruptly ended the stream just minutes after. The next day brought a whole new set of challenges for Daniel. He was scheduled to meet with his therapist on the 20th and received a payment of $58 for his music. However, his financial issues persisted, as shown by his comments on his video, where he mentioned going to dinner without money and having four commitments the following day, with no means to fulfill them. He also stated that he was fighting for a bull market, a rather odd statement given his current situation. In addition to his financial troubles, Daniel faced a court hearing in Lakewood, Colorado, where he was to be given options regarding his overdue payments. The specifics of the hearing and its outcome were not disclosed, leaving viewers to speculate about the severity of Daniel's legal and financial predicaments. That evening, Daniel dined at Indulge Bistro and Wine Bar, where he ordered jalapeno nachos and pasta for his meal. However, the evening took a turn for the worse when the police were called to the restaurant. Daniel claimed that the police were summoned because someone was supposed to meet but didn't show up. Despite the incident, the restaurant ultimately decided not to charge Daniel for his meal. However, as a result of his actions, he was banned from all restaurants in the town, further limiting his options and highlighting the consequences of his erratic behavior. Last night, the police were called to the restaurant I was at, and they didn't even care. They just said that the bill was on the house. The female officer from Golden Police Department yesterday was actually extremely hot. Man, those buns were awesome. Yesterday, I was supposed to meet somebody for dinner in Golden, Colorado, at the Bristow on Washington Street, and the person never showed up. So the restaurant manager paid for my meal, but because they knew who I was, and my popularity, they told me that they have reported me to all the restaurants in Golden, Colorado, and I'm now banned permanently from all the restaurants in the entire town. Because, all because one person didn't show up. Like, what the fuck? On the 20th, Daniel attended a court hearing where he was likely presented with options regarding his ongoing legal issues. The outcome of the hearing resulted in Daniel being placed on probation for eight weeks, during which he was required to attend therapy sessions in Jefferson County. Additionally, he was ordered to pay $400 in court fees for the session by January 10th, 2024. Daniel later claimed that his total court payments amounted to approximately $10,000. Despite his troubles, Daniel maintained contact with an individual named Lauren, whom he believed to be Grace Vanderwall's manager. I am now in contact with Lauren, who works for LBI Entertainment and is Grace's manager. He also spent the night at the Jefferson County Public Golden Library, a decision that highlighted his lack of stable housing. In a bizarre turn of events, Daniel announced that he would be embarking on a world tour with Grace Vanderwall in 2024. However, just a day later, he abruptly cancelled the tour without explaining his sudden change of plans. I just got word from Grace Vanderwall and Clark and & Associates and the LBI, LBI Entertainment that Lauren, Grace's manager, is going to be paying for my plane tickets and my passport for the world tour with Grace for 2024. Also, I told Grace Vanderwall and Columbia Records and LBI Entertainment I cancel the tour for 2024. On December 21st, Daniel's day began with breakfast at McDonald's. He then took to social media to warn his fans of an impending 72 hours of mass chaos within the Daniel Larson community, a cryptic message that left many of his followers puzzled. 
Despite his struggles, Daniel claimed to have saved $50 for an emergency. Throughout the day, Daniel's erratic behavior continued. He self-diagnosed himself with heat rashes despite wearing a jacket. Alrighty. Well, it just got hot enough outside I got heat rashes all over my body. And now it's gonna get below zero. <laughs> and appeared frustrated upon learning that the Jefferson County Police had banned him from eating at any restaurants within the county. In response, Daniel angrily claimed that he would take this to war and planned to press charges, despite his bank account balance being at zero dollars. The Jefferson County Police Department has told me that I cannot eat anywhere within the county and no restaurants will be serving me from now on. The Jefferson County Police Department is just jealous because I am more famous than the Colorado mayor. Well, my bank account is back at zero because of those two police officers. I just pulled out the $50 from my phone bill and I'm pressing charges. Let's take this to war. He sarcastically announced the cancellation of his decision to donate $1,000 to the town, a promise he had supposedly made despite his lack of funds. <sighs> Too bad for the $1,000 donation I was going to do to the city of Golden, Colorado. Man. Not happening now. In a surprising political statement, Daniel declared his intention to vote for Donald Trump in the 2024 presidential election. He also expressed his desire to enroll in college in January of 2024, a goal that seemed at odds with his current situation. I'm voting for Trump in 2024 because I think it's unfair that they take him off the ballot. And for that reason, I might just leave the state of Colorado and violate probation so I can vote for I've been calling colleges all week long, trying to get into college for January 2024. It seems he really learned nothing from CU Boulder. As the day progressed, Daniel received an offer from Boulder, Colorado to stay in a shelter located in Dinosaur, Colorado. He also considered traveling to O Block in Chicago for Christmas dinner, a plan that raised concerns among his followers given the area's reputation for high crime rates. Well, since the Golden Police Department and Jefferson County doesn't want me in Colorado, I guess I could go to Chicago to O Block for Christmas dinner. Daniel managed to dine at a restaurant where he enjoyed a Sprite, 10 pieces of pancake puppies, and a milkshake. He also embarked on a hiking expedition to the peak of South Table Mountain Park, a physical feat that seemed to provide a momentary escape from his increasingly turbulent life. On December 22nd, Daniel claimed that Larson Records, his music venture, had generated $615 in revenue during December. He also announced his enrollment in an online college program set to begin on March 4th, 2024, with a focus on music production. However, he acknowledged that he would need a laptop to pursue his studies. I start college on March 4th, 2024 in music production. I need to get a laptop for college. I just signed up for college for 2024 to start in March. As the day wore on, Daniel's financial struggles became increasingly apparent. He initially planned to skip dinner due to a lack of money, but ultimately ended up eating two cheeseburgers at Burger King. He expressed a desire to secure a motel room for the night, a luxury that seemed out of reach given his current circumstances. Daniel also mentioned his intention to get a new haircut in early January. I need to work on getting a haircut in early January. 2024. Once again, it seems like seems like Daniel never learns from his mistakes, does he? In a curious development, Daniel's entertainment manager Clark claimed to have become friends with Daniel McDougal. According to Clark, McDougal had demanded that he recorded all phone calls with Daniel. Clark, my entertainment manager, has told me that Daniel McDougal 
has talked to him and is demanding that Clark records all phone calls with me, and Clark is claiming that he denied it. This incident sparked a series of bizarre posts from Daniel, including comments about hearing gunfire and the need to call 911. In one video, Daniel began posting comments such as, Emergency, I just got a random call from a New York phone number and it said I'm coming for you and hung up just a few seconds later, and then I heard gunfire. A person claiming responsibility for the prank call directed at Daniel advised him to stay at the library. Now obviously you heard me bring up the name Clark earlier. Clark is a very important figure in Daniel Larson's story and especially this installment of the series. As one of Daniel Larson's most notable managers, Clark has played a significant role in shaping the trajectory of Daniel's life, both online and off. However, Clark's involvement in Daniel's affairs is far from straightforward. Under the guise of being a lawyer for the Vanderwall family, Clark became a self-proclaimed assistant helper to Daniel, despite not providing much genuine assistance. One of the most controversial aspects of Clark's involvement with Daniel is his alleged role in perpetuating the false belief that Daniel is in contact with Grace Vanderwall and her family. In addition to manipulating Daniel's perception of reality, Clark has also been accused of gatekeeping content related to Daniel, financially enabling him by providing cash and gift cards, and orchestrating situations that have led to public freakouts. Clark's involvement with Daniel can be traced all the way back to the Las Vegas arc, during which he initially discovered him. From that point on, Clark repeatedly played the long game, gradually working his way into a position of influence and control over Daniel's affairs. When I for real like heard about him, I first saw like TikTok videos about him, but I didn't get involved into the lore or any of that until Vegas. I got his number from somebody and I kind of just played the long game. And here we are, I guess. And I would have quit a while ago, don't get me wrong, but I have a, I have a goal in the end and I'm not gonna say what it is or anything, but it, it's gonna happen soon and he's gonna get what's coming. His firm's name, Clark & Associates, has been watermarked on various pieces of content related to Daniel, including footage from the Folsom County Court hearing and several other videos. Despite the growing controversy surrounding his actions, Clark has remained a constant presence in Daniel's life, even after his true identity was exposed in an interview with Flexberger on December 17, 2023. While many other managers have chosen to distance themselves from Daniel or the internet as a whole after having their identities revealed, Clark has continued to play an active role in Daniel's story. On the 23rd, a significant incident unfolded during Daniel Larson's TikTok livestream, which came to be known as the Golden Hotel Incident. The event took place at the Golden Hotel in Golden, Colorado, where Daniel had supposedly booked a room to stay for a week with who he believed was Grace Vanderwall which may have foreshadowed the impending incident. Approximately two hours beforehand, Daniel claimed that he and Grace were working on securing a hotel room for the night. By this point, his live stream had garnered significant attention, amassing around 100,000 likes and drawing in about 6,000 viewers. In less than 12 hours, everything is going to shift. Grace and I are working on getting a motel for tonight. Many of these viewers attempted to manipulate Daniel's perception of reality by claiming that Grace had died or that the FBI was pursuing him, urging him to flee. Before entering the hotel, Daniel was seen walking around and appeared to be narrating text messages between himself and his manager, Clark. At one point, Warren was mentioned, but their relevance to the hotel situation remained unclear. Daniel also mentioned someone named Lauren, also known as Lawrence or Lucas, who he claimed was impersonating him due to being angry about being fired. Daniel stated that Clark could confirm the legitimacy of his contact information. Before entering the hotel, Daniel made a call to inquire about his reservation, only to discover that one had never been made. Clark denied this and insisted that a reservation had indeed been placed. As Daniel entered the hotel lobby, the staff informed him that he did not have a reservation. They then received a phone call warning them about Daniel's history of similar incidents, to which the staff then requested that Daniel leave the lobby. The entire comment section just went to shit. Great. Last thing I need. While walking on the sidewalk outside the hotel, 
Daniel noticed a black car that he claimed had been following him since his court hearing earlier that day. He proceeded to film the vehicle, seemingly suspicious of his presence. Why is that car? I'm gonna make sure I get that on film. There's a black car that's been following me around the last couple of days, too. It followed me into uh, to court, actually, a couple of days ago. Shortly after, Daniel returned to the Golden Hotel, seeking the phone number of the person who had called to complain about him. He believed that his manager had made a reservation and that he wanted to prove that the trolls were interfering with both him and the hotel. The front desk staff, addressing Daniel by his first name, refused to provide him with the caller's number. One staff member claimed to have received calls from neighboring businesses, cautioning them about Daniel's presence. The manager specifically mentioned that they had received calls from Indulge, Woody's Pizza, and nearly every other business on the street, indicating that Daniel had been causing trouble in that area. Daniel claimed to be friends with the manager of Woody's Pizza, but the hotel staff remained unconvinced. The hotel manager then demanded that Daniel leave the premises, threatening to involve the police if he failed to comply. Daniel became visibly upset and then shouted. He insisted that he had a reservation and that the trolls were causing problems for both him and the hotel. The manager, however, remained firm, stating that regardless of any reservation, she had the right to deny service to anyone. She emphasized that she had people paying good money to stay at the hotel and did not want any issues on the property. Daniel accused the hotel of stealing his money, claiming that he had already booked a room, but the manager denied this, stating that she did not have the reservation that he provided. Enraged by the situation, Daniel cursed at the staff and pushed a glass sign to the floor, causing it to shatter. The manager, now visibly furious, began screaming at Daniel for damaging hotel property, and a heated argument ensued. Daniel threatened to violate his probation and leave the state of Colorado due to being ejected from the Golden Hotel. The manager chased Daniel out of the lobby, yelling at him to leave and to never return. As Daniel fled the scene, he could be heard hurting himself and shouting profanities at the hotel manager, calling her a fucking idiot and a bitch. He continued to threaten to leave Colorado, claiming that he could not make a living in the state due to local businesses working against him. Daniel's live stream began to lag as he ran down the street, but he managed to continue screaming curse words. The live stream then cut out for an extended period. When the live stream resumed, Daniel was seen walking down the street, exclaiming, Holy shit, before the stream abruptly ended. Excuse me, can I get, um, by chance, the manager that uh, talked to me just a couple minutes ago? I just need the number that they were talking to for uh, proof. Yeah, but you were asked to leave um, our property. You're not allowed to stay here, and I'm gonna call the police department. I'm I'm aware, but I I just please leave our premises. I'm right asking now. for the number that called. And I am asking you because and it was indulged. Me. It's been Woody's Pizza. It's been every. Of you. I don't care. It's been every business on the street. I'm friends with the uh, Woody's manager, so... They called us saying that you were causing troubles. I haven't even been there in, like, a couple months. Please leave, Daniel. I am asking you to please leave the property. I'm not doing this with you tonight. I do not want to call the police, and I will. Okay? Like, why You're would you... You're not allowed why, the property. Why would you call the police on me if I'm not doing anything? Because I've asked you to leave. And but I, have I, multiple people come and tell us right, that but, you are causing problems in Golden, Colorado. I have people that are paying good money to stay here. I, I did too. I did too. You, you are stealing my money because I have already booked a motel Daniel, room. I don't Daniel, I looked have, at the reservation that you provided me, the confirmation. I don't have I, anything for there you. There is nothing in there. There is absolutely nothing in there. We have asked you nicely. I, I have. I'm going to tell you, you need to leave. I have proof that I booked the reservation. Let me see it. I just read it to you, like no, when I was sitting right over there. Yes. I don't care if you take a video of me for your stupid TikTok account. I'm over it, and I will have the police trespass you if you do not leave the property right go, now. Go ahead and trespass me. Okay, great. I'm working. Uh, on this that is now. uncalled for. It's not uncalled for. I have the right to refuse anybody no. in this building whenever I feel like it. 
I don't want the issues. And it's a red flag when all of Golden knows about who you are, Daniel. It's because I'm fucking famous. I don't care. I don't care if you're famous. So they're calling our business saying that you're causing trouble. And right now you are causing my property trouble. So I need you to leave. Okay, then I'll leave the fucking state of Colorado. Bye. See you later, sweetheart. Are you serious right now? Yes. That's why. That's why you're kicked out. Get out. I'm calling the police. Get out. You guys are ridiculous. Like, just because I booked a motel room? Don't break my stuff. Don't break my stuff. Get out, Daniel. Now. Get out. Don't come back. If you come back. Then I'll leave fucking Colorado. Get out. Get out. Then I'll leave property. fucking Colorado. Get out of my property now. Then I guess I'll violate fucking probation and leave Colorado. Goodbye. Because all this fucking Goodbye. town is reporting me. Goodbye. Fucking idiot! I'll move out of fucking Colorado, you bitch! A matter of fact, I don't even want to stay in Colorado! Because everybody on this fucking block is reporting me to you and I had that on film! In the aftermath of the incident, Daniel posted videos on TikTok alleging that the hotel had stolen $2,000 from him. He claimed to have booked a room for an entire week, but was denied access to it. Okay, I will leave fucking Golden Colorado now. I will leave Denver. The Golden Hotel just stole $2,000. I booked a week at their motel and they refused to let me in because the Woody's pizza manager apparently reported me to them. On December 24th, Daniel Larson returned to Denver, Colorado, where he spent the day at a grocery store that he had visited the previous night. During his time there, he consumed an array of items including Prime, Salami, Starbucks coffee, and sparkling water. As the day progressed, Daniel made plans to have lunch around noon and claimed to have a hotel reservation in Golden, Colorado for Christmas Eve night. For lunch, he visited a Chili's restaurant where he was seen eating what appeared to be a potato soup. However, it was the events of the 25th that truly marked a turning point in Daniel's life. On that fateful Christmas day, Daniel experienced a significant meltdown on TikTok and his YouTube community comment section. The incident was triggered by a combination of factors, including Bob's refusal to make contact with Daniel, the extreme cold weather in Colorado that day, and being denied entry into various establishments due to his known pattern of behavior. At around noon, Daniel posted a message stating, Bob cancelled, indicating that he was unable to get in touch with him. He expressed concern that Bob might be actually dead and that something was amiss. He also announced that all of his plans for Christmas had been cancelled. In an attempt to check on Bob's well-being, Daniel called 911 for a wellness check. The police later contacted Daniel, informing him that Bob was alive but simply wanted nothing to do with him. Frustrated by the situation, Daniel posted an angry TikTok video. Well, Bob canceled. Can't even get a hold of him. I think he's actually dead. So, that's serious. Something's going on. It is Christmas 2023, and I have called 911 to do a wellness check on Bob. The uh, officer has told me that he is on site 
It is Christmas 2023, and I just spoke to the police officers. I did the wellness check on Bob, and the officer said Bob wants zero contact with me. It is Christmas 2023, and apparently Bob is alive, according to the police. I'm doing absolutely nothing. Okay, it is Christmas 2023, and I am doing zero celebration, and I will be on the streets for the next three weeks. As the day wore on, Daniel began posting multiple videos on TikTok, expressing his anger towards Bob for abandoning him on Christmas Day. The final TikTok posts were made at 6.15pm MST, well after dark, and the entire meltdown lasted no longer than half an hour. I just had $100 pretty much taken from me because I got kicked out of the motel tonight. Oh my god, I cannot feel any of my hands or any of my feet. And the cold air is going through my fucking clothes. Oh, fuck, it's gonna be a long night. Holy shit, it's cold. <sighs> no more motels. Fuck. I was trying to be all nice to Bob. I know how he doesn't want me posting about him. But after tonight, on Christmas Day, I have no choice but to slander his... I won't be having family dinner on Christmas Day or nothing. Bob is treating me like a piece of fucking shit. And I want to die. Bob just completely shut off his phone. Won't answer any of my calls. And my fucking Christmas is fucking ruined because of that jackass Bob. And fuck this care package. I don't need a fucking care package. I will throw that into the fucking lake. <laughs> Apparently Bob thinks it's funny to watch me in pain. Fucking Christmas Day. <laughs> Oh my fucking god, I just got fucking attacked by some guy walking down the fucking road. What the fuck? I hate Bob. Fucking bitch, it's Christmas Day. I don't know why Bob is doing this. He's turning on and off his phone, playing with my emotions. I fucking hate this. I hate this. Bob is being a bitch. Oh, oh, oh fucking hell, bitch. I will fucking murder Bob. I will fucking have him fucking murdered. Oh, fuck, it's cold. Holy. I will fucking have Daniel McDougall fucking killed. The following day, on the 26th, Daniel took to his YouTube channel to explain the situation that he had found himself in. In the comments section, he revealed that Clark had told him that LBI Entertainment was planning a Christmas celebration for the night. However, instead of attending the celebration, Daniel decided to go to the hospital, citing issues with his heart caused by the stress that Bob had put him through. While at the hospital, Daniel stated that the police were called on him. Daniel also shared that Bob had told him that Daniel McDougall had ruined his life forever. He lamented that everything had been perfect until he tried to take Bob to dinner for Christmas. When a commenter asked about Daniel's current state, he replied, It's not looking good. During his hospital stay, the staff were unable to provide Daniel with food until his heart rate was under control. They conducted blood tests as well as an x-ray. Daniel posted two separate pictures from the hospital, showing that he had been able to have two meals there. He also claimed that Bob was starting to kill him, whatever that means. 
As of noon the following day, Daniel was still at the hospital and continued to post in his YouTube community section. He ominously stated, get ready for more escalation. Approximately an hour and a half later, Daniel was discharged from the hospital. He did not mention any specific diagnosis or further health issues. In the aftermath of his hospital visit, Daniel announced that everything was going to change, particularly in terms of financial growth. He also revealed plans to release a new album in January. Daniel later disclosed that he had been in the hospital for extreme chest pains, signs of skin cancer, and signs of a heart attack. A few hours after his initial hospital visit, Daniel decided to return for a mental health evaluation. However, he did not provide any further information about his second visit, leaving people to question its validity. On December 27th, Daniel's day began with a meal at a restaurant, where he enjoyed biscuits and gravy, sausage links, and a melon. He then made a series of concerning claims stating that the FBI was involved and investigating him. Daniel warned, it's going down today, and expressed a sense of darkness and danger surrounding his situation. Daniel recognized that he was being set up and alleged that the Vanderwalls and Bob had wanted to plan a dinner with him that evening. However, he stated that he couldn't verify their identities and therefore did not want to have dinner. He believed that both his location and the lives of Bob and himself were in danger. And to make matters worse, Daniel's phone number was leaked onto the r slash Daniel Larson fan subreddit, further compromising his privacy and safety. He recounted an incident in which security personnel at his location had approached him, claiming that he was in extreme danger of being killed and that someone had been calling businesses he had visited, notifying them about a bomb being planted in the hospital or wherever he went. Daniel stated that the RTD security, also known as the Transit Police Department in Denver, had warned him that he was in danger and that someone was out to get him. As the day progressed, Daniel grew increasingly frustrated with his fans, telling them to stop texting and calling him. He expressed that his fans were out of control and did not own him. Amidst this chaos, Daniel mentioned needing a haircut the following day and shared that his fans had been sending pictures of drones with guns attached to them. On December 28th, Daniel began his day by attending a probation meeting, at this point now a routine occurrence in his life. Following the meeting, he indulged in a blueberry pie for breakfast. Later that day, Daniel received calls regarding his failure to file taxes. In response, he took to social media to ask tax-related questions such as, how do you claim your income? As the day progressed, Daniel hinted at the possibility of a live stream that evening, leaving his followers to speculate about what he might have in store. In a surprising turn of events, Daniel met up with four fans at a restaurant, where he claimed that the fans had offered to take him to Jamaica if Bob had failed to secure a motel room for him. Here you go. What's up? <laughs> Bob, if you don't get me a motel room tonight, these fans are going to take me to Jamaica. Yes. The day concluded with Daniel visiting a Walmart with his newfound fans. This man is a security guard and he's got some big tits. Yeah, now let me bust some boobs. He doesn't have the tits like Drain Johnson. I do not. Whoa. The 30th marked a particularly alarming incident, which came to be known as the drone incident. Daniel uploaded a video in which he could be seen running and shouting, shots fired, shots fired, creating a sense of panic and confusion among his followers. Shots fired, shots fired. What? While outside of the supermarket, shots possibly a safe way, Daniel noticed the drone flying above fired. him and captured footage of it on his TikTok. He warned that drones will be reported and threatened unspecified legal action against the operator. For that. We have people now. We have people now that are using drones to try to track me, and I will end up reporting it to the police. Okay, so I have a police report going out. The police are on their way to take a report, and I have the drone on camera. It's, oh my god, that drone is like at least... Please stop filming me before I call the police. The drones continued to harass Daniel until New Year's Eve when he finally called the police after spotting the drone again. On New Year's Day of 2024, the Bums and Drones TikTok account posted a picture of Daniel seemingly defending himself against the drones, hinting at a potential Daniel Larson feature. The account later uploaded a series of Daniel videos they had captured in the following days.
Despite the ongoing harassment, Daniel claimed to have made $900 in December, a figure that seemed to provide him with a sense of accomplishment amidst the turmoil. However, Daniel's troubles continued, as evidenced by an incident in which he fell and dropped his groceries on the ground. When asked if he had picked them up, Daniel admitted that he had not, showing his struggle to cope with even the most basic of tasks. In a disturbing development, a video surfaced on the r slash Daniel Larson subreddit, hosted by none other than Flexburger. The video showed an individual handing Daniel a stack of counterfeit cash. As the new year approached, it seemed like Daniel would only continue to be swept up in the currents of his own life, forever at the mercy of those who sought to exploit and manipulate him. As he was going about his day, a group of three trolls approached him, filming the encounter. The troll holding a cup of Mountain Dew asked Daniel how he was doing, but Daniel, perhaps sensing the impending danger, chose not to engage in conversation. Instead, he informed the group that he was charging for photos, a decision that may have been driven by his desire to assert more control over the situation. However, Daniel's attempts to steer the interaction in a more profitable direction quickly took a turn for the worse. The man holding the Mountain Dew, seemingly unprovoked, threw the contents of the cup at Daniel. Despite Daniel's efforts to dodge the incoming liquid, he was ultimately unsuccessful in avoiding the assault. Drenched in the sticky, sugary beverage, Daniel initially walked away from the scene, perhaps in an attempt to remove himself from the confrontation and maintain his composure. But as the man who had thrown the Mountain Dew began to follow him, Daniel's fight-or-flight response kicked in. He began to run away away from the attacker, shouting, hey, back away, back away, as he fled. The aftermath of the incident left Daniel in an even more compromised state than before. The liquid likely seeped into his clothing as well as his hair, creating an uncomfortable and potentially foul-smelling situation that would have been difficult for anyone to endure, let alone someone in Daniel's circumstances as a homeless person. Daniel! How are you? Uh Good. I, I am charging for photos. Hey! Back away! You like that, Daniel? Back away! On January 2nd, an OnlyFans model named Sky Bree posted on her story that she wanted to meet up with Daniel. However, after learning more about Daniel's background and behavior, she quickly posted an apology on the r slash Daniel Larson subreddit, distancing herself from him. On January 4th, Daniel's online activity took a more political and confrontational tone. He uploaded a picture of himself saluting and once again claimed that Bob had left his life and betrayed him. Daniel also mentioned that two Discord servers were arguing about him, although he did not specify which servers or provide any further details. I have found out that there are two different Discord servers and both of them are arguing with each other about me. So apparently there are two Discord servers and both of them are claiming to be management of me, and they are fighting with each other. In a moment of apparent frustration, Daniel revealed that he was subject to a travel ban until 2025, likely as a part of his probation. He also appeared confused about the date of his next probation appointment, stating that it was scheduled for January 7th, despite it being January 4th at the time. I am now on a travel ban and cannot travel till 2025. I have Boulder County probation again tomorrow, 
January 7th, 2024. As the day progressed, Daniel made a series of claims about his living situation and the challenges he had faced. He mentioned that he was on his way to his quote-unquote dorm, that as a part of his probation, he was required to sign up for chores at the facility, and that he had signed up for laundry duty. Daniel also commented on the relative cost of living in Boulder compared to Denver, claiming that Boulder was more expensive. So I am now on my way to my dorm for night number two. I have to go sign up for my chores for the dorm as part of my probation. I have to get ready to do laundry for the dorm tonight. Boulder, Colorado is more expensive than Denver, Colorado. In a concerning development, he mentioned that he had been informed that the person responsible for the drone harassment he had experienced claimed to be in contact with Grace Vanderwall. However, it was later suggested that this information may have came from a troll, as the individual behind the drone incidents had never publicly claimed any connection to a Vanderwall. The next day brought more challenges and controversies for Daniel. He began the day by asking his followers to stop texting him what to post, claiming that his social media accounts were being monitored by the courts. Daniel also announced that his probation appointment had been cancelled that day, adding to his legal situation's confusion and uncertainty. My probation today got cancelled. In a moment of apparent socializing, Daniel mentioned that he was going to meet someone named Jacob at a Target store in Boulder, Colorado. I am about to go meet Jacob at the Target in Boulder, Colorado. He also revealed that he was subject to a two-year ban from all CU University campuses, a restriction that he claimed was the result of a mistake by the court judge. Throughout the day, Daniel shared details of his meals as well as his shopping plans, stating that he had paid $25 for breakfast and that he was planning to go clothes shopping with some friends from CU Boulder. Okay, so I just got breakfast this morning for $25. I'm about to go clothes shopping with some of my friends from CU Boulder. He was later seen eating a meal from Panda Express, which included orange chicken, lo mein, an egg roll, and a fortune cookie. However, the relative normalcy of these events were quickly overshadowed by a series of disturbing and paranoid claims made by Daniel. The January 5th incident occurred when Daniel Larson was relentlessly harassed by trolls who pursued him across multiple locations, including Panda Express and Barnes & Noble. Initially, Daniel was squirted with water and chased down the streets. When the trolls realized that they couldn't catch him on foot, they got into a car and followed him, shouting vulgarities at him. The first video shows Daniel standing outside of a store on his phone when someone runs up to him with a modified water bottle designed to squirt water. As the troll approaches, Daniel immediately runs away, with the troll laughing as they chase him. In the second video, Daniel is seen making a phone call while eating lunch at a Panda Express. Four teenagers approach and sit down next to him. After a short while, a fifth person joins the group and pulls up a chair. The person recording says, You know you're hanging out with a pedophile, you know that, right? This prompts all five men to immediately leave their seats, and the video cuts to the next scene. In this scene, the boys are seen whispering to each other in a car before approaching Daniel, rolling down the window and yelling, Fuck you, Daniel. They continue to drive around trying to locate him, shouting at him whenever they see him. Daniel is seen obviously attempting to evade them, using his phone to contact someone. Eventually, they find him inside a Barnes & Noble and chase him around the store. These kids are giving him money, bro. You know you're hanging out with a pedophile, right? You're hanging out with a pedophile, you know that, right? Yeah, good job. Good. Okay, but next time I am.
I'm going to once you give me your car. Otherwise, I would have driven my car. Hey, fuck you, Daniel. Get up on him, you're good. Yeah. Stop, 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 No, no, go straight. Here you go! Take my turn back This person in the picture, in the video, has been following me around. I found a group of people that were following me around and taking pictures everywhere I go and then spam calling, getting me kicked out of the locations. I take harassment very seriously. I don't play around. I will call the police on everybody who causes issues. Alrighty, so the police showed up and they said that they, the two people that were filming me, following me around, weren't following me around and weren't taking videos of me and weren't sending me text messages and they called me a liar. Okay. That black car or that red car going down the road, they just screamed at me, fuck you. We're down the window. We're down the window. Slow, slow, stop, slow, slow. Hey, Daniel. He's moving. Oh, fuck you, Daniel. Don't make me get out. In a series of text messages sent to Bob Proctor, Daniel made a disturbing and seemingly unfounded claim that he had been involved in a four vehicle bus crash, which he blamed on the Discord. He also lashed out at Bob, calling him a quote-unquote little fucker for not caring. On January 6th, Daniel created a new TikTok account under the username at Daniel Larson Work 2024 after apparently losing access to his previous account, Daniel Larson Work 24. He claimed that he had been attacked the night before and had been involved in a car accident resulting in his phone being stolen and his eye being slightly injured. Daniel's sudden switch to a new TikTok account was likely due to his inability to remember the password for his previous one, which he claimed held $600 in funds. In order to continue his online presence, Daniel said he spent $400 on a new phone, although the source of this money remained unclear. January 8th saw a noticeable decrease in Daniel's TikTok activity for reasons that remained unclear. He did, however, announce the creation of a new YouTube channel, Daniel Larson Work 2024, and shared photos of himself eating out. In a series of concerning TikTok slideshows, Daniel revealed his bank account information showing a negative balance of $1,017, a record of him spending $952, and a meager savings of $5. The following day, January 9th, saw a particularly disturbing incident unfold during one of Daniel's TikTok live streams. Although details were scarce, it appeared that Daniel was at the Canvas Credit Union at Denver International Airport when he was confronted by an officer and the operations manager for airport security. During the confrontation, it was mentioned that Daniel had five outstanding warrants, although the nature of these warrants was not specified. Coincidentally, this incident occurred at around exactly the same time that the third part of this docuseries was premiering online. And then I have another meeting um, tomorrow back in Boulder with my probation. What are you on probation for? I'm not obligated Actually, to say. Actually, you are. It's, it's part of conditions of your probation. I am on probation for trespass. Because, well. From a different location um, okay. for a misunderstanding. Okay. Well, as part of the conditions of your probation, you're obligated to tell me why. And you're obligated to tell your probation officer that you've had police contact. Just so you know. 
I am aware of that. I don't want that. you to be in violation of your probation. And how old are you, Daniel? I'm 25. Okay. Just so you know, the gentleman that was in here with you? Ah, uh, yes. Is the one to flag me down. Okay? Okay. So, I do have a reason to talk to you. Okay? That, that's fine. Okay. I, I understand that. Do you have any other personal property that's what's in your pockets? I, I have my um, court paperwork. Okay. But that's it. Okay. So in addition to the two warrants that we're going to take you on today, you have three additional warrants that are not extraditable out of Denver that you need to go take care of. I am aware. Okay, so that's five. And then I was also, like, I was, like I said, I came here to the Canvas Credit Union because I had I'm to. I'm going to tell you that's not going to fly today. I... Airport office is going to explain that to you, so we can keep... keep... Quit going over that piece of information. Airport officer's gonna explain it to you. They have a nifty little database just to, to, to document all these things. How you doing? I'm uh, aware. Uh, give me a second. So you flying out today? I'm not. I came here to the Canvas Credit Union um, because I bank with them. Okay. And then I was waiting about 10 minutes until, well, it's now about 10 minutes, but I was waiting 20 minutes because I was waiting for the bus to downtown Denver. I had to, I was, uh, I was aware of the warrants and um, they are bench warrants and um, I was on my way down there anyways to go handle those. Okay, so uh, I, I had to I had to go to the bank this yeah. morning here because I got my uh, debit card. Okay, so I'm with Airport so, Operations. I'm not gonna say that's official business, so you can't be out here unless you have a boarding pass. There's other Canvas credit unions or other credit unions you can use. Um, so you're being advised today of a Rule 30.18. If you come back out here, you can be cited for trespassing. Do you understand? I understand. Okay. Are you, are you going to unplug your, or we'll unplug it, just go and stand up for us. Yes. Do you want me to turn off my phone? That's up or... to you. Okay. On January 10th, Daniel claimed to have cleared his debt and shared photos of himself traveling on a bus including one image of a person in a blue coat taken through the bus window. The significance of this photo and Daniel's reason for sharing it remained unclear. On the 12th, Daniel denied having a court appearance scheduled despite there being a court date on record. He insisted that he wouldn't attend probation unless he had physical paperwork to prove its legitimacy. Hello, so for everybody saying I have court today in Boulder County, that is not true. I don't have violation of probation court because I have never been given the paperwork. And when I talked last with my probation officer, they would have to provoke the probation and it would take some time before there would be a court hearing. My guess as to what is going on is that there's another Daniel Larson, like multiple Daniel Larsons in the state of Colorado, and my name just so happens to pop up. Until I am given paperwork or a document saying I have court in Boulder County, it's fake information. On the 13th, Daniel revealed that he was $500 in debt and had run out of money for the month. He attributed this financial hardship to Bob Proctor's inability to help him due to his own unemployment. Despite these challenges, Daniel claimed to be starting production on his first music album. On January 20th, Daniel made a series of claims about his manager, Clark, stating that he didn't believe Clark worked for Clark & Associates because he wouldn't provide his full name. He also said that Clark wanted him to attend UCLA. Daniel claimed to have gotten a hotel room on this day as well. He shared his supposed learnings about the role of emotions in the entertainment industry when creating movies or music, 
although the legitimacy of his enrollment remained <clears throat> questionable. The following day, January 23rd, brought a significant development in Daniel's life. A warrant was issued for his arrest due to his failure to appear in court and pay the associated fines. He was also pictured at the Aurora Mall with three unidentified males. On January 24th, Daniel went live on TikTok for about two hours, garnering over 100,000 likes and 4,000 viewers at one point. During the live stream, he walked around outside, laughing and running, and allegedly discussed his preference for margaritas and Bud Light over Coors Light, which he claimed tasted too much like tumbleweeds. In a bizarre twist, Daniel claimed to have learned about the alleged first king of Texas, Aishid Anfarid. <laughs> I, I'm not even going to try pronouncing that in his history class. However, the veracity of this was laughable, considering that Texas has never had a king and is not an ancient civilization, not even close. I'm going to start class anyway here. Share the PowerPoint for all of you for this class. All right. So everybody can see that, right? Yeah. All right. I, uh, I can see it. I can see it. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing that for now. Uh, I'm just going to take attendance real quick. Uh, when I say your name, please say that you are here. All right? I got it, I got it, I got it. So, first student on my list, John Anus. All uh, right, yeah, what's up? Uh, it's pronounced Anus. I'm okay. here, though. Bart Ryder. Yeah. Hello. Okay, Bart Ryder is here. here. Bobby Bobby Boucher. Uh, I'm here. Clark Hunter. That's me. Daniel Larson. Okay, I see Daniel raising his hand. All right, so uh, today we're going to be doing a presentation um, on world history. I want to thank all of you for coming to this class. I'm going to start streaming my screen here in a second for you guys, just so you can see the presentation. All right. So welcome to, uh, to World History. Uh, this is the first class of the first semester in winter. My name is Michael Eichfeld. I've been a teacher here for three, year, three years here at UCLA. So essentially what's going to be going on during this class is we are going to be exploring world history. Um, this is important as an elective uh, because you might have picked this class just for extra credits or this might be a class that is a part of the credits that you need for your major or minor. Okay. Um, so today we're going to be talking about ancient civilizations. So I have a question for a few students here. Uh, I'm going to leave these as open questions when I ask them. Um, but if you have an answer to one of these questions or think that you know the answer to one of these questions, um, it is important for you to just raise your hand or unmute your microphone um, and, you know, take turns when you're talking. OK, um, I like having an open classroom, um, which is important to me. I like having open discussions and debate and letting people's voices be heard. All right. So the first ancient civilization I'm going to call on. Oh, we have two Daniels. Um, Mr. I'm going to call on Daniel Larson. What is one thing you think of when you think of ancient Egypt? When it comes to Egypt, the first thing that comes to mind would be um, the Great Egyptian Pyramid. Perfect. That was the answer I was looking for. Thank you. The Great pyramids in Egypt, right? That's the first thing everybody thinks of when they think of ancient Egypt, right? Perfect answer. Now, something that's much closer to home that happens to be in Texas is the Temple of Quantarius III. This is a pyramid that was constructed 2,500 years ago in Texas. Obviously, in this uh, picture, it's being preserved um, due to archaeological efforts by scientists, um, but this is a great example of the Temple of Quantarius in Texas. I believe it's located five miles from El Paso um, currently, but yet again, this is ancient um, history of its time. Now, the first king of ancient Texas, his name was Ashid Anfarad, and he was the first king. Now, that's important to remember because that will be on one of the quizzes that we have next week. All right, so if you need to take a screenshot of my presentation, I think I, I saw this guy at a museum one time. Now, the main religion, I'm going to have you guys name the, 
first religion you can think of when it comes to your mind, right? Because we're going to compare it to the religion of ancient Texanians, right? So I'm going to start with, uh, um, I'll pick on Mr. Mr. Larson had a very good answer the first time. Mr. Larson, can you think of uh, just uh, any religion you can think of um, off the top of your head here? Buddhism. Good. Yes, Buddhism. A very good answer. Stoicism is what it's called. Was an old religion back in the day. That was a mixture of both Buddhism and Islam. All right. Um, so first we have 3,000 years ago. We have ancient Texas, right? It had high economic power and stability. Their economy was very, very good in ancient Texas, right? Then we have an era where they were struggling, and they were using stones as currency, right? I'm going to call on. Mr. Larson here. This you can just guess. You can you can guess as to what it was like. But what do you think it was like in Imperial Texas about a thousand years ago? What do you think it was like? Man, I want to say that it was um, very. I want to say people were using like they went through a period where they were using like anything that they could find, like. Um, kind of like how um, when America was first created um, and we didn't have like paper coins or paper dollars or whatever like we would be using gold I believe that they were using um, stones um, gold silver um, mining was big back in the <laughs> day as well you're speaking actual facts. Yeah, no, that's absolutely correct. You're absolutely correct. That is exactly what it was like. So the giant of Texas. So these are actually real archaeological finds that I've actually worked on a site before where we've been digging up these bones um, and ancient dig sites, right? So 5,000 years ago in Texas at the time, there were giants that were roaming around and we have archaeological evidence real evidence to prove that giants were walking around um, as you can see in these photos they're digging up the bones and they actually have a giant skeleton on display um, at the houston museum of natural history okay this is kind of off subject a little bit but um to go along with the entire uh giantism um theory um and what um other people were saying in the class i i believe in the bigfoot um kind of off subject but i have actually seen um one time camping a similar uh story wow can you can you explain your experience i've actually never heard of that before. can you explain your experience with well um i was camping when i was super young i was like eight years old and um all i really remember was i was like inside the tent and i heard like a howl and um it wasn't like a bear or wolf or anything but something actually sat on my foot inside the tent and i thought at the at that age it was a bear but my family told me it was something a lot bigger um, and possibly a Bigfoot that sat on on top of my tent on my foot. Wow. Was was the tent destroyed? I imagine he's, he's pretty big, isn't he? The tent wasn't destroyed, but there was like a corner of the tent where it was dented in. Um, so I appreciate you guys being here and being on time. You guys have all been great. More of like, uh, instead of uh, world history, more of like world alien history. <laughs> <laughs> what the <heck? laughs> Well, I thought it was weird about the entire uh, human-sized skeleton. No. Dinosaur-sized skeleton. So if you look at that picture, the person that dug up the skeleton of, like, the actual head just alone was the size of him. On the 26th, 
Daniel Larson's erratic behavior and desperation reached a new and alarming level when he checked himself into a hospital in Aurora, Colorado. Daniel, who had been struggling with the harsh winter weather, pretended to fall ill in an attempt to seek shelter within the hospital's walls. However, his plan quickly unraveled when he was discharged and subsequently found sleeping in the hospital's lobby. The hospital staff, recognizing that Daniel had no legitimate reason to remain on the premises, asked him to leave. Daniel, however, refused to comply, leading to a tense confrontation with the hospital employee. In a live stream that captured the incident, Daniel can be seen arguing with the employee, who he claimed was from the cafeteria. Daniel expressed his reluctance to leave, stating that he did not want to wait 45 minutes in the rain outside, despite the hospital having shelters available for this very purpose. As the situation escalated, Daniel defiantly asked the employee to call the police and have him removed for trespassing. Eventually, a police officer arrived on the scene and presented Daniel with a clear ultimatum – either leave the hospital voluntarily or face arrest. After some initial resistance and the threat of arrest looming over him, Daniel begrudgingly conceded to leave. However, before departing, he demanded the officer's name and badge number, to which the officer responded by providing Daniel with his business card. As Daniel made his way out of the hospital, he could be heard cursing the staff out under his breath. His frustration and anger was very visibly noticeable. It was at this moment that Daniel made a deeply disturbing and threatening statement, claiming that he would commit quote-unquote a mass shooting on the place. Following his expulsion from the hospital, Daniel launched into a tangent about people spreading lies about him. In a further display of his deteriorating mental state, Daniel began to talk about Daniel McDougall, the supposed Secret Service agent who had allegedly been interrogating him about making bomb threats. Daniel claimed that this interrogation was a result of his fame, but shockingly, Daniel then followed this revelation with a threat to shoot up and bomb Bob Proctor. You want me to wait outside for the bus? For 45 minutes. You said it comes at 8.35. That's less than 10 minutes from now. It's delayed. Okay. Because of the there snow. There is a spot that you can stand where you're not going to get snowed on. But you can't wait inside. You've been discharged and it's time to leave. It's like... You've been, you've been, you've been harassing me. I've been asking you politely to leave because you've been discharged. I want, I want the police to show up. I want the, I want the police. I don't care. Trespass me from the fucking hospital. That's a violation. No, it's not. That's me enforcing the hospital's policy and the right to be safe. So I guess I won't go to any fucking hospital in the fucking state of Colorado. I guess I won't. I guess I will just leave Colorado because you can't trespass me from a hospital if I was a patient. I certainly can't trespass you because you've been discharged. You've been medically cleared to go Right. So I and I told you I was wait. I told you I was waiting for the fucking bus. Don't cuss at me because I'm not cussing at you. The bus stop is over there. You need to wait over there for the But bus. I'm not you you were following me around the entire I place. I'm coming to my meeting, but I see you here because we just told you to leave the ER and you decided to go out And I the I did leave the ER. Okay. This is the this is the cafeteria area. This is not the cafeteria. You need to head to the bus stop. This is. This is not. This is the main lobby. This is the main lobby, exactly. It's not the cafeteria. But you're waiting for the bus. You need to be at the bus stop, waiting for the bus. And the bus stop, I know exactly where it is. It's okay. Here's the. We're not gonna argue. You already told us. Leave, right? Right. So we leave immediately, or you leave with me now? But but no, leave. But leave or go with me. Your choice. Why? We're why done. would We're I go with by. you? We're done, but because you're trespassing. I'm not trespassing at all. I was a patient. I'm not gonna argue with you. You're trespassing. It's time to go now, or you're gonna end up in the jail. Your choice. I, I'm just. I don't understand because I was a patient. I got discharged. You've been discharged, and you were sleeping. You were told to leave. I you wasn't. Told, I wasn't told, sleeping in the lobby at all. Because I was there, so it's time to go now. I wasn't sleeping in the lobby at all, okay. and I told you so I was to waiting go now for. Or I'm about to put you in handcuffs and take you to jail. You can't do that because. Okay. You like literally okay, so can't. So you're under arrest for trespassing. No, I'm were not. Are you ready to go? No, I'm not, because I'm leaving. So get up but and I'm leave now. But I'm explaining to no, you. No, we're done explaining. 
Or you can explain it I, to the judge. I have a lawyer. And okay, good. You're going to need him in about 30 seconds. So get up and go. OK. What's your name? What's your, you and what's your badge number? Yeah. I'll give you a card. How about that? That's straight up harassment. OK, cool. Well, if I'm trespassed, I ain't never coming back ever. Fair enough. And I guess I'll leave this day in Colorado. Fair enough. Fucking moron. Damn. I guess I'll plan a mass shooting on the place. Holy fuck. Treat me that way. I'll treat him with disrespect. People want to come up with lies about me. Then I could come up with lies as well. Was going to fucking arrest me for trespass? <laughs> I'm not even trespassing. I was a fucking patient. I have the fucking paperwork. If people want to fucking lie and say that when I got discharged from the hospital, I was waiting in the lobby for a ride, which is illegal. I can't wait in the fucking lobby for a ride. Then... They are out of their mind. What are they going to do with an 80 year old or somebody who can't fucking walk? And then tell them like, oh, you're going to be outside. Find a ride. What the fuck? And then the officer, the police officer, wanted to come up with lies about me. The officer's name is Sergeant B. Samuels. His ID is 246440. for the Aurora Police, Colorado. And the guy wanted to come up with a bunch of lies about me and then tried to arrest me for trespass. 30 minutes after I was like discharged. And they previously wouldn't even get me a bus ticket. They were telling me to call Bob and get him to come pick me up. So. And I found out I do, in fact, have the flu. Now I need to figure out a motel room. Uh, I am very sick. I don't know why they treated me like that, especially if I was a patient and if I got tested positive for the flu. My bus that I needed, but they lied to me about where the bus stop is, so <laughs> whatever. It's on the other end of the parking garage. No, it isn't. Lies. It was right out in front of where I came out of their business. Out of their main lobby. <laughs> But no, they were too lazy and didn't want me standing there. They're sitting.
main lobby. That's open to the public. <laughs> Shit. Fucking amazes me how people want to come up with stories saying, say lies and say that like, I have, <laughs> I have like, things on me that I don't. The Daniel McDougall guy, the secret investigator guy, it amazes me with him, but, um, long story short is he thought I, he thought I could actually make a bomb. I don't even know how to use fireworks, are you fucking kidding me? And the guy wants to come up to my family and say that I was making a bomb. Just because I was famous, like what the fuck? People just amaze me sometimes with their stupidity. Apparently I can't self-defend myself. But I think I'm gonna call Bob and I'm gonna leave him a long voicemail about if he doesn't give me $3,000 so I can get a motel room for a week and get an apartment, then I might actually show up on his property. Because I think it's absurd with the fact and I'm like literally waiting for the bus. The first bus I was waiting for got actually because of the snow. So I didn't go to the station. I was waiting for the next bus. On the 29th, Daniel posted a picture of his family and his manager, Clark. He also announced the creation of a backup TikTok account at Daniel Larson Backup Work. The following day, January 30th, Daniel's TikTok account at Daniel Larson Work 2024 was briefly made private before being made public again. He claimed to have learned about the Roman Empire in college and uploaded pictures of his supposed lessons, which included the dubious claim that, quote unquote, Julius Caesar invented the Caesar salad. As the month wrapped itself up, Daniel's legal troubles came to the forefront once again. On January 31st, he revealed that he was facing a plea deal of one year in county jail for probation violations. In a shocking admission, Daniel confessed to having dine and dashed to the tune of around $50,000, claiming to have done so almost every day, three times a day, for the past four years. I cannot hide this any longer, but from all my dining and dashings, I have probably robbed restaurants over $50,000. I have been dining and dashing from restaurants almost every day, three times a day for the past four years. And Bob doesn't seem to care. I still owe Guinea's diner about $50 for meals I couldn't pay. I still owe IHOP about $30 for meals I couldn't pay. Despite these challenges, Daniel announced another fan meetup at the Aurora Mall. It is January 31st, 2024. I'm doing another fan meetup at the Aurora Mall. And uploaded pictures of what appeared to be black smoke, likely from a fire, adding to the sense of chaos and instability that pervaded his life. February has always been known as a short month, but for the Daniel Larson community, it was one of his shortest yet. Not much occurred throughout the month due to later events that I will get to in this chapter of the video. As the month started, Daniel Larson's life seemed to be following a familiar pattern of erratic behavior and incidents with law enforcement. On the first, he found a small moment of comfort in a bag of Skittles, but quickly turned his attention to his broken shoes and the need for a new pair. Alrighty, so 
I warned everyone about the shoe issue and how I needed to get new shoes. So, now I'm in crisis. He announced that he would have to cancel his phone bill to afford these quote-unquote emergency shoes. Later that day, perhaps seeking a respite from his troubles, Daniel embarked on a hike to a place he hadn't visited in three years. As he walked, he reminisced about his past, recalling a time when he participated in marathons and 5k races, a distant memory compared to his current circumstances. So, the sole of my right shoe broke this morning, so I have to cancel my phone bill and get emergency shoes. So this morning is February 1st, 2024. I am going on a walk on a little hike to somewhere that I haven't been in three years. Alrighty, so back around the year 2020 and 2021. I used to live all the way up on this part of town, kind of near Buckley Air Force Base, which I will show here shortly. Um, but back when I used to do a lot of jogging and running, and I was doing marathons and 5Ks, which is like three and a, I think it's like three miles and a quarter is like 5k races. I used to run all the way up here day and night, day or night, and I would spend like all night long out here running like in the middle of snow, when the snow's like foot back then. It doesn't happen very much in Colorado anymore because of global warming. But back when it used to be snow, like an actual foot of snow, I would come all the way out here. So I'm gonna show you guys kind of where I am. But uh, yeah. I used to run along here, and that was back when I was doing like 15 miles, 15 mile runs, and I would be gone like 5 hours, which by the way, my care providers hated, but that's besides the point. Um, that's part of the reason why they decided to kick me out of so many care provider homes, is because I would run and practice my jogging for like five, six hours at a time, and they said that was against the rules, but it doesn't matter anymore. They pissed me off enough, but uh, yeah, once again, this is kind of the area, and I would come all the way up here, and I would run like crazy, practicing for my marathons. However, just two days later, on February 3rd, Daniel's world was turned upside down when he was arrested for fleeing the state of Colorado to avoid prosecution and his probation. His bond was set at a staggering $20,000, a sum that seemed insurmountable given his financial situation. Little did he know that this arrest would mark the beginning of the period in his life that would come to be known as the Jail Arc. The events leading up to Daniel's arrest were as bizarre as they were concerning. In the early hours of February 3rd, Daniel went live on social media, claiming that police cars were following him around. At the end of the stream, he abruptly announced that he was going into lockdown before ending the broadcast. Okay, um... I might have to go on lockdown. I don't know what the fuck that car was doing. I might have to go and call Clark. That's the third time I've seen the same police officer follow me. It's a local police. 
by. <sighs> not like they can do anything. They're not after me, I haven't done anything. So they can't, they can't legally do anything. Okay, so now I need to find, because I know where I'm heading. I'm going to get breakfast. Well, it's almost two o'clock, so I'm going to get lunch. Gotta be careful on a Friday. Because, uh, college students get off class and then they go party anywhere they want. So, weekends are more hectic with the teenagers when you're a celebrity. So, great for business, but Fridays and weekends are terrible. Summer break is good, winter break is good, as long as it's not snowing. Wow. Every single time I'm alive, the amount of streams I get go up. Well, we have a little bit of an issue. I'm getting so many um, gifts in this live stream that I might as well get an apartment tomorrow. I made, according to what it says, yeah, almost 300 gifters this live stream. That's like 300 to 400 dollars already this live stream. Too bad I can't cash out the money. I'll have to talk to Bob about that. Oh, now I got a swan? That's the first time ever I've got a swan. Aren't swans like 80 or something, a hundred dollars or something like that? going on almost $350 now this live stream for one live stream if only I could find a way to uh, cash out Um, those doggies, I think, are like, aren't those doggies like a dollar or something? Like five or something like that? And I can't even keep up. We're going on $400 now. I made enough for the motel, if only I can cash out. I made more than enough for the motel. Why is life always so manipulative? When the fans know I can't cash out. That's when they donate like crazy. <sighs> but when I can cash out, they donate little. Well, I have class in an hour. I 
think it is the it's the music class but I don't have the music for it because they wanted me to use band lab and if they're not going to go over how to make the song in the class they just say oh here use this platform do it then I'm taking the wrong class too early because I don't know how to uh, I will need a producer and since I don't have a producer then my homework is gonna fail Clark should have taken like music theory 101 or something that covers the actual like songwriting or at least like um at least um like a music production class rather than a class where it's the actual projects because they don't go over the actual fundamentals of what needs to get done. They just say, okay, this is what we're doing today. And your homework is now to complete a song. And the lyrics are whatever you create. And now we need you to create a beat to go along with it. Well, okay. While this might have been dismissed as another of Daniel's delusions, it soon became clear that he had indeed been arrested. Daniel was taken into custody on a fugitive warrant for evading justice, having purposely missed several court dates. He was booked and jailed in Arapahoe County, Colorado, with his initial bail set at $20,000. Three days later, on February 6th, the gravity of Daniel's situation became even more apparent when body camera footage from his arrest was released to the public. The footage, which was acquired by a Reddit user for $174, revealed that the entire Aurora Police Department had received an email briefing about Daniel, including his threats to shoot up the hospital. Officers were instructed to apprehend him immediately upon sight. During the arrest, Daniel's phone was also taken into evidence, further complicating his situation. Six thirty two, we're gonna go ahead and make contact with her right now. It's, it's, hey, hey buddy, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Relax. Just remember to rest. Relax. 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 We have you stand up, okay, buddy? Okay. How's your day going other than this? What kind of class? Starts up for college. Okay. Finance? Not marketing, something like that, right? Marketing. Oh, heck yeah, man. Heck yeah. We're going to take you straight up this one? Hey, you're gonna be good, man. Sure. What's, up, what's up, baby sauce? I think you had it under control. <laughs> this way? Okay. Thank you, boys. <laughs> You got, you, got, you got like three of them. Uh, the one that they want you for is the one that's out in, I believe, Boulder. Something about a probation violation or something. So you clear that stuff up with them. It's going to be all good, okay? No need for it. Yeah. Get a bag. You got anything you on you? Like... My phone broke by chance. Right, I don't right, think. Right, right. No, we got, we got everything here. Hold on, right, your charges in. Do you know if it, like, the screen was, broke or anything? Nah, you're good, bro. Grabbed and it kind of just fell from the countertop. Nah, it should be good. Look, okay. the, the phone. You no, phone's out. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, um, here, I'm gonna. Uh, 
Yeah, we had a couple conversations with Dr. Chi, right? Yeah. Yeah. Are you good? You're good. I'm gonna pull your pants. You got your. Pull your pants up. So you want to explain it to him real quick? Yeah. It's so what we're gonna do too is issue a trespass from this mall. Okay. Uh, it is for life, so you're not welcome back. Uh, we have all your information here. Uh, we're just gonna get a picture of you, and then after today, you're just not welcome back here. Okay. All right, so as long as you stay away from the mall, you should be all good, okay, brother? And it's uh, for life. For life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So if you just wanna look into the camera real quick. So we get, so you got a bag, property bag? I, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, it's right here. You want to switch sides with me? Yeah, man, I got you. I got you. I see him on TikTok. All right. All right. Have a seat, All right, Mr. Larson. Hey, you get those warrants and everything taken care of, and then we'll see you out here again, okay? Okay. All right, brother. I hey. was aware of the warrants. Okay. Um, I yeah. just have been staying at a hotel okay. on this end of town. I got you. And I am um, because I'm like self-employed. Okay. I, I didn't have enough money oh, to okay. get to the court. Gotcha. Um, and all of my paperwork and all of my um, stuff is at the hotel. So. I got, I got you. No worries. So <laughs> the good thing about this is you're gonna get one of these warrants cleared up. Okay. Okay. There's two other warrants that's in the system for you right now. So there make sure once you get Denver, right? uh, one of them is yeah one is never one is Jefferson. Once you get those cleared up, you ain't got nothing to worry about. It. Just if you ever in the future was to get a ticket, at least call them to let them know that you won't be able to make it, and they can try to reschedule some stuff for you so you don't get the warrant. That's what I was okay. actually working on doing as okay. well already. Um, okay. I saw you guys um, in there, okay. and I was like, I don't know if. Because I was told mm -hmm. that, yeah. like, Are I can't leave the state of Colorado. I, got you. I, I thought I was following the rules. Come back later. So yeah. I was like, I am more than aware that you guys uh, probably know gotcha. about gotcha. the warrant. But I didn't think that you guys could hey, arrest me on the warrant. Yeah, some, some of the some of the warrants are um, some of them are, are some of them are listed the, like you know either city uh, citywide or whatever or oh, statewide. The, the one that they wanted you on was a statewide, so anywhere in the state can pick you up on that one, which is why we can't charge you with the or take your hand on the other two. So that's why I'm just keeping you updated right now. When you get done with this one, make sure that you take care of the other two, okay? Because I don't want you getting jammed up again. Okay. All right. And um. Mm -hmm. Do you know which jail? I'm yeah, our, our jail right across the street. Okay. Okay. And then I'll give you um since we made contact, I'm gonna give you my business card or whatnot. Okay. Do you know what type of warrant it is? It's a probation violation warrant. All okay. right. Do you know so, if it's um a bench warrant or? It's a, it's like a twenty thousand dollar warrant. Okay. All right. So just you know, when you get down there, they'll probably be able to explain it a lot better than what I can, and then you just take it from there. Okay, brother. Okay. All right. I'll leave my business card inside the property bag or whatnot, and that'll be it. Okay. All right. Take Do you care know yourself, if brother. It's like a um, PR or. I'm not too for sure. Okay. Just when you get down there, ask them all that stuff, and they'll be able to tell you. Okay. Okay. All right, brother. You take Thank care you. of yourself, man. Oh, Lee. Hey. What questions do you have? I'm Sergeant Davis. I'm, I was so, one that hi. was there. Um, so when I was met with the officers that arrested me, uh -huh. um, 
they grabbed both my arms and mm -hmm. put them behind my back. Uh -huh. um, it's called arrest of, control. Right. Okay. And I feel like it was kind of aggressive. It may have been a little um, aggressive. Yes. Okay. Do you know what kind of warrants you have? I do. Yes. Okay. Do you do you think that um, due to the fact that you have a history of being violent with other people, that maybe that's why they did that? Because here's the thing, right? If they do that, and then they that keeps you from being violent, then that keeps you from being hurt, doesn't it? Right. Okay. And I I agree. Okay. I just uh, feel like it was um, aggressive for the m meaning of what they were trying to do at that time. I feel like if I was being aggressive, mm -hmm. then. I feel like that makes sense. Okay. Did you make statements that you were going to shoot up the Aurora Mall? I did not. Okay. On TikTok, you did not do that? No. Okay. Well, they're, they're, that that's possibly one of the things that you got this warrants on is because of that. Okay. So that's, that's up for debate, but that's the information that we have. So we don't know if you're armed. We don't know what other weapons you may have on you I, so yes. what what do you use what do you use to what part of your body do you use if you're going to use a weapon i you would use your hands right i would use my hands exactly yeah. so we want to have control of your hands and so for our arrest control and the way that we do arrest control is we gain control of the, of the hands and there's certain ways that we do that it's a twist lock and and sometimes it's uncomfortable right, right? it's not the most comfortable hold to have your hand twisted like this right. okay but what does that keep you from doing? Keeps you from it, fighting, huh? Right. Okay. Yes. Right. Um, I. Another thing is, I am extremely popular on social media. Okay. So it doesn't surprise me that one of my fans would have called the um, a war mall okay. and then claimed I said something okay. I didn't because okay. that happens all the time as well. Okay. All right. All right. So I will I will give you my my card my business card okay okay and if you want to lodge a complaint there's a complaint number on the back or you can call me directly okay from the, okay. the from the card if you have any other questions okay um, I would tell you that you're probably going to get a better return um, as far as someone talking to you if you just call me if you have any other questions okay okay all right does that work that works okay thank you uh, so. You good, Alexis? I will put this yeah, in yeah. your <laughs> property, wherever he has. Where's your property at? Uh, I'll go get it. It's in the car. You okay. Just, you leave it right there. So. Yeah. So he'll. This will be in there. Okay. okay. Any other questions for me? Um, not really. I mean, I know how the jail process works. Okay. And uh, <laughs> it's kind of the shorter one. Yeah. The not one. great. Uh, but I was going to go ahead and also call my probation officer and let him know, like, this is why. Okay, I they'll, they'll, probably, they'll probably do that for you. Okay. okay. They'll call, they'll call in and, and do all that stuff. Um, but just ask them. Make sure that they do call your probation officer, okay? Okay. All right. Um, any other questions for me? Nope. I think I'm good. Okay. I just uh, hope I get out and I can go about my day or whatever. Stay law. Okay. Do what I need to do and go back to my probation officer. Okay. That's my hope. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. He's grabbing stuff out of car real quick. Okay. That's swings. Cruise 21, he's out getting something from his vehicle, I believe. Do you know if I'm going to be transferred um, or... Uh, I'm gonna be booked here. Or, What's um, that? Do you know, like, if I'm gonna be booked here or? Yeah, so you're booked here, and then they'll transfer you to where that that warrant is out of. And then I'll get booked there. Yeah, I don't know how that works. I don't know okay. how the jurisdictions work as far as that goes, but that's usually what they do. They have their own booking process, so okay. you'll go through that. Okay. okay. All right.
haven't been in here over here in a while. It hasn't changed a whole lot. It's still the same nasty green color. and Well, actually, the color used to be kind of cool, but now it's so... Uh, uh, related to this one? Oh. Dirty and nasty. Yeah, I just... So I remember, like, yeah. we're going back and forth. Mm-hmm. Handcuffing him to the bench. So now we're back to handcuffing him to the bench out of his arms. Okay. The benches are kind of low. <laughs> okay. Where's the box? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I gotta... So, just, wrap the whole kind of and, like and I don't know if those are the new ones. So, and, and then Adam's, you have your warm one yeah. on the top there. So this is a wrap the oh, And then wrap the and then yeah. Adam's is... And Adam's, we don't have to... Uh, no, 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 Okay. This one is a missing. Yeah. Okay. Yep. You good? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Did you need any... You do, so, what was he calling you about? I guess uh, 116 is dealing with a possible child abduction, and I guess everybody in their mamas there speak Spanish, so... And okay. I'm the only Spanish speaker in the city, probably. An actual abduction. It, it sounds like it, yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so you got yeah. That's like all the Yep. Sir? Into contact? That same day, Daniel managed to make a call to Clark from jail, which was posted by Flexberger. During the conversation, Clark informed Daniel about the passing of country music star Toby Keith. Despite his circumstances, Daniel mentioned that everyone in jail had been kind to him and that he was receiving help. Both Clark and Daniel expressed hope that he would be released within a maximum of four months. Hello, this is a call from Daniel Larson, an inmate at the detention facility. Thank God. Okay. Yeah, so apparently this is pretty much all possible. But it's because, don't, don't tell them this, but it's because I haven't been going to my um, probation meeting because he won't give me my money to be able to get there. Okay, so I have a couple things to tell you, I guess, because I don't know, have you had any contact with the outside world yet? No, I haven't. Well, uh, sadly, Toby Keith passed away. Who? The guy who sings, Toby. yeah, who sings Red Solo Cup. Right. Yeah. Toby Keith passed away. Yeah. Huh, no. <laughs> well, how's okay. well? So, how you doing so far? Well, I'm doing okay. Do they have you in like general population, like with a bunch of other people? I guess it's I guess it's considered protected custody, general population. Oh, okay. I know, twenty thousand dollars. Worst case scenario, yeah, and I, I don't think I'm gonna be here too long. No, I mean it would be max, is what I was looking into. I think a hundred and twenty days. Well, that's a hundred. The max is hundred and twenty days. It's still, still a decent time, but. I mean, yeah, that's yeah, scary. But... It is scary, but... 
your body cam your body cam footage just came out like two hours ago and wait wait a minute so so the fans leaked my camera footage yep all of it from the jail yeah they put hands on you hard oh yeah yeah they did they did and you also called me like a minute before it happened so i placed all those pieces together yeah they have a phone yep, and and you were asking if your phone was broken. Yep. Yeah. Anything you know more if my phone broke? Yeah. That's crazy. If the fans leaked all the camera footage. All of did it. They, did they also leak the ones from the jail? Yep. When they're asking you the questions in jail, and then there's they even leak stuff you couldn't hear, where the cops are talking about how you're big on TikTok, and that you pulled yeah, the. Yeah. They pulled the fire alarm and they were talking about how you have all these people on TikTok that follow you. And then there was an ununiformed police officer who I honestly think was McDougal. Was McDougal there? I don't, I don't think it was Daniel McDougal, but I do believe it was somebody from the FBI. You know? Yeah. And I do, I did see your friend too, the like the black security guard. They were telling the other cops were scared to approach you. They were like, he could be armed and dangerous. And the one guy was like, we could get this done in five minutes. This is not that complicated. It really isn't. And, and, that's, and, that's, the, and that's the thing, Sars. He's not going to run through the mall. We got three of us here to be able to grab him easily. I have a rapport with them. They're making this more complicated than what it needs to be. It doesn't make, it, it just doesn't, we don't need all these resources to take one dude into custody, which he's going to be fine like a whole thing they like surrounded you in the mall it was crazy yeah 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 i i don't know why they were acting the way they acted but anyways yeah so i'm i'm okay um, thank god yeah um my main concern is you know just how we're gonna get this taken care of exactly you know um, I know for a fact Bob can't do it all. Um, you know, I don't know if Grace can. I don't know, you know, I I think it's going to take a team effort, but... I mean, if we already got in contact so far, we're off to a good start. Yeah, yeah. I probably shouldn't even say this, but it's, it's not the problem, but whatever. But... Um, haven't even seen a public defender yet. Jeez. They're saying that as far as safety goes, they are not allowed to tell me when I'm being transferred. She Which does make sense. Well, yeah, because they don't want your fans coming to bust you out while you're being transferred. Right. And also your mugshot's gone viral, too. My mugshot? Yeah, is viral. So, so... No, no, there's no videos of you with like other prisoners just getting checked in. Just getting checked in, wow. Okay. Well, I mean, the fans are go the fans have done that before. True. But, and I mean, there's nothing I can do, you know. Have you been eating well or? Yeah, oh my god, she was shocked. And I was like, because we didn't think, we thought you would be out by the morning, and then everything just kept getting worse and worse. Right. Um, you, so what have you been doing to fill your time? Have you been, like, writing songs or working? I, I, can, I can write songs. Um, at this point, I would, probably, but I don't. Now that I have contact and I can confirm that, I was gonna say. My big concern is just trying to, you know, keep keep getting the mail stuff. Exactly. I mean, and I can also leave messages to the community for you. Like, if you want to say anything to the Reddit or anything, I can like tell them. You know. Yeah. Uh, what I would what I would say if we said anything to the community is um, if we could try to. Like all good team 
work to try to pay the bill. Yeah. I agree. I'm going to try and get on that straight away. I, what I would do is I would set up a Venmo, um, Cash App, GoFundMe, and I mean grind, you know? Yeah. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it will get up there fast if, if people grind. And, you know, and like, like, give it, like, four days max. Exactly. And another thing is you could even, like, you know how the famous artists sometimes they, like, they per- they do stuff over the phone like music and everything. Well, I do I we probably can't do that, but that doesn't stop me from True. being able to publish lyrics. True. You know how you know how artists have done that before. There's no but stopping. Anyway, I don't I don't want to waste our True. time and money right now. All right. Okay. I will I will call you in the morning. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, I am out like from breakfast to lunch and then from dinner till like 11 no 10 10 okay yeah 10 Colorado time well do you know what time it is right now I I don't really do anything you know I'm either playing cards with the rest of the people in the you know big room but when I'm in the cell Jeez. I will probably start working on marriage. I was, my big concern right now is just about college. I thought I lost contact with you. Don't worry, Daniel. I never give up. Yeah. I I knew what I had to do. Yeah, she is. And so is the whole UCLA thing, because the votes came in later that day, and you won. But then since you were nowhere to be seen, Chang took over. So you got to take your place back once you get out. Well, well, yeah, and that's not good, because, I mean, we already know his rules and stuff for UCLA, for the government. Yeah. It's like... It, it, yeah, I don't understand. Like, like, I don't know why he wants to put, like, him dog. Even though it is legal to eat dog in, like, China. I don't know why he's trying to get that in the U.S. now. Yeah, that's weird. And he's an international student. Who knows if he's lying or not to the entire school just so he can run for student government. I don't True. know. True. And then, did you meet, you, have you met some friends? You said you were playing cards, so. It's like a war. I, I haven't really, I don't want to call them friends, but. I, I, I'm not really sure how to describe it. Like, I met some nice people. Yeah, yeah. I grew up myself with the people I, I don't want to say I trust, but I feel comfortable with. Yeah. And is your cellmate um, a nice person? Yeah, yeah. But, um, what I've been told, um, this is just what I've been told by the other cellmates. You have one minute remaining. Oh, shoot. Yeah, um, yeah, but anyways, I'll, I'll talk to you tomorrow, okay? Okay, I'll be ready. All right. All right. All right. Now, right. Stay safe, Daniel. And as the days passed, Daniel's legal troubles continued to mount. On February 13th, he was scheduled to appear in Jefferson County Court, but failed to do so due to being in jail in Arapahoe County. The judge set a new date for March 27th. The following day, February 14th, brought a glimmer of hope when Daniel appeared in court for a hearing on advisement. According to a Reddit user, Daniel's attorney informed the judge of his diagnosis with autism and PTSD, and mentioned that he had friends assisting him with finding shelter through motels. The attorney also noted Daniel's social media fame and the income he had generated through his TikTok presence. The judge ordered a psychological evaluation and set a new court date for February 23rd. Daniel's bond was set at $5,000 with a $500 cash option, and he was transferred to Boulder County Jail. 
During his time in jail, Daniel made several video calls to his manager Clark, which would later be released by Flexberger. These calls provided a window into Daniel's state of mind and the challenges he faced while incarcerated. In the second call, Daniel revealed that other inmates were showing people his photoshopped images and nudes on the jail's tablets, which had Wi-Fi access. This situation forced Daniel to move cells and share a space with two other people. Apparently, so because of the uh, tablet things that they have here, where the video calls, yeah, it's got Wi-Fi. Of course, it's charged just like anything, right? Yeah, that's fine. They do have, they do have tablets and. People are going around to cell to cell showing all of my um, photoshopped, not even the real photos, but photoshopped photos of me. Are you, are, you, are you serious? Yep. Jeez, so they, they... The ones that we are trying to have taken down are the ones that are being shown. Oh, so like the nude pictures? Yep. Jeez, did, did you see that like today? The third call, which took place on February 14th, was particularly revealing. Daniel claimed that Bob had bizarrely threatened to kill himself if the courts didn't provide Daniel with housing. He also expressed his belief that Bob should be the one to bail him out, given that he had previously provided Daniel with financial support. Daniel's desperation was real as he asked Clark to reach out to Tina and Grace in the hopes that they could assist with his bail. Jeez, are you good? Let me see if I can hear you better. Oh, there you are, Daniel. Jeez, you're looking good. Yeah, so... Uh, have you been working out? It's just to a point, I don't really know what to really do at this point. And he's telling me to tell the courts that if they don't get me housing, Bob's going to kill himself and all this weird stuff. And it's like, no, like, please just, you know, like, I don't want to be involved in all that garbage. Jeez. And it's not the court's job to get me housing. It's not. I mean, it's, I mean, so Bob's threatening the court to kill himself if they don't get you. Yeah. Well, he's, he, he's 70 years old. Yeah. You know, and he's acting like being 70 years old gives him the authority. And all it's doing is it's bringing down my life. And it it's is. like, it's framing me is what it's doing. It's making you look worse than you, and right now, since you're sitting in jail, it's not the best situation. Right. Here, try and... in the end, he should be the one to bail me out, because he's the one that's been giving me all my money. Exactly, and he's the one that didn't get you housing or anything, so he screwed up everything. Right. Here, try and see if you can turn your camera on. I want to see if you're doing good. I have to go back downstairs because it only the camera only works if it's connected to the wall. Jeez. But let me see. Okay. Yeah, so what I would do is I would talk to Tina and kind of go from there. Okay. I can do All that right. for you. Um, and then in the meantime, I guess, um, I should go for now to save battery and to save money. Okay, yeah, smart. Okay. All right. And I will message you back. Okay. Stay safe, Daniel. All right. Yep. Stay safe. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, stay safe. Okay, message Tina and Grace and see if they can fill me out. All right, peace. The fourth call, which took place on February 21st, was the longest and most comprehensive. Daniel and Clark discussed his ongoing legal challenges and the possibility of a plea deal that could see him serve yet another year of probation. So you would have to do another six months to a year, probably? I think it would be another year, yeah. Okay. I mean, they that... would restart it for another year. 
That's better than jail time for sure. Already have twenty days. I don't know yet, but they're thinking they might add that. Okay. So your public defender said that they might take the time that you've already done and add it to your sentence. Yes. Okay. That 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 is a good sign. I mean, they're screwing you over. It's the legal system nowadays. It's just- It's crazy. I mean, have you been okay, though? Like, I mean, have you been meet? Do you have any friends in this one? Yes and no. Kind of. I mean, not really friends, but, I mean, people I can talk to, yes. Yeah. I mean, I see those people in the back. They look like they're good people. Yeah, you play some cards tonight, you know. So there is a couple things to discuss. Chang or Chang has kind of been trying to get me expelled from UCLA. Well, okay. Yeah, he he thinks that I have some say and that I'm a criminal and all this. And I I spoke out against him saying that he's trying to bring politics to the United States that have nothing to do with what we're talking about. And it's complete bullshit. I, I'm sick of what he's doing. We need you back. We need you out. I mean... Yeah, I, I agree. So, I mean, have you been eating again well? Like, uh, what did you have for dinner tonight? I've been eating fairly okay. Um, I've been extremely concerned about race, and um, I want to move things forward with, but I need to be out, and I need things to go smoother financially. I, I agree. I mean, what would be your plan, do you think, with Grace when you got out? Like, how, how would you want to move it close? Like, how would you want to, like tie the knot, I guess. I think, I think I need to get enough money to save up. I feel like I need to get that done within like a month or two. Two months max. And I think um, as soon as I get an apartment, Grace can move in with me. I I mean yeah you, you I mean it would be like a one bedroom but you should be able to afford that in Denver at the latest. Um, there's also a huge that Jacob Markovich guy. He said he like was filming you from in jail. Is that that's false? He might have been. I don't know, but he might have been. I did a video call with somebody. Oh shit! Down oh, in Arapaho. Oh, you did a video call with someone? Yep. Jeez, okay. I mean, who really cares, let's be honest. Okay. Are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm okay. It's been like a rough, it's been a rough two weeks dealing with everything. I mean, you hit, you hit 67K on the subreddit. And, I mean, I got arrested, and they took my phone, so I had to get a new phone. And I bailed out, though, pretty easily. I don't know when my court is, but... What happened to get you arrested, though? Um, They said I had warrants out, and uh, I was like, I went back to St. Louis to see my grandma that's in the old folks' home. Because, you know, I'm in New York. And they said I had warrants out in St. Louis, apparently, and they took me in to the St. Louis County Jail. And I was like, what? I haven't even been to St. Louis in like five or six years, so I don't know. Yeah, my hope is um, as soon as I get out of here, I'm going to talk with Grace and try to figure out how she wants to, to help move things forward. Probably gotten... I mean, a wave of just kind of freedom while in jail, but at the same time, I mean, it's kind of like housing, you know? You have like, right. a, you have a curfew, you have to wake up at a certain time and do all that. 
Um, have you been keeping busy though? Like, have you found any new things to be doing, or what have you been doing? I really haven't been doing much. I've been playing cards with a couple people. Uh, been playing rummy. Rummy? Okay. Yeah. Been thinking about grace and thinking about us and how we want to try to move things forward. And besides that, I just haven't really talked to her because I've been stuck up in here. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm glad that no one's like tried to assault you or anything. At least. Right. Um, did they put you on any medication, or are you still just taking the protein shakes? shakes and I'm on medication right now okay yeah I mean that that's probably best to be honest some of that medication makes I mean changes your mind you know I don't I don't know what Latuta does but I know you don't like it so uh what else can I I mean we have we still have a bunch of time yeah I think You know, I was thinking on when I get out, I was going to put out a couple more songs in the recording studio. Okay. Have you been, like, thinking of lyrics while you've been uh, in there? Yeah, I've been saving up as well, so oh, I have you... the money when I get out. Uh, oh, so you haven't been, like, spending money on ships or anything in commissary? Nope. Nope. No. Dang. You're a hard-headed guy. Like PP or something? Uh, no, I'm not. Are you? No, I just see how you're looking at the camera and then you look away, and I'm just wondering what you're watching. I just get distracted because I have ADHD. Yeah. Um, are there? <laughs> are there any gangs? I don't know if I do, but yeah. I mean, you def. I mean, autism, ADHD, same thing. Um, are there, like, any, like, gangs in there, or no? don't know. I'm pretty sure there is, but I don't really care. Oh, yeah, you're, you're just kind of staying on your own. Yeah. Um, I mean, other than that, we just got to keep trying to get money to get you out. Bob still has yet to respond to me. Has Have you gotten a hold of Bob recently? Yeah. I actually got a hold of Bob earlier today, and he was saying that he, it was kind of interesting what he said. He said that he was struggling to get a hold of you, and you weren't messaging him. That was what he said. And then I said, can you message him on the same number as before, which is how I got back a hold of you after I got to Boulder, right? Yeah. And so I know that, like, somebody is lying. I think he blocked. I think Bob accidentally blocked me, like, a year ago before I I had full contact with you on my number. I'm pretty sure I texted him and he blocked me. I think it is, too. Um, And then he also told me that he was kind of um, having a hard time believing that like me and Grace were together. I mean, the dude wants to believe what, it, I mean, what does he not believe you're in jail right now too? Like, <laughs> he could definitely bail me out. He's refusing to and we told him about the UCLA thing and he's like, that's great. He knew I was doing well and then now he's just like, fuck it, I don't care. And then I'm like, and he's blaming the fact that Grace is a millionaire. She has enough money to bail me out. But at the same time, we know how Tina kind of controls a lot of her finances right now. Yeah. So I'm... without Tina, with people, we can't really do anything. Exactly. And, and Tina's pretty much like been super whole, hard to get a hold of. And every time I get a hold of her, it's like... Oh, Grace is practicing, or Grace is doing what? And I'm like, well, Daniel needs some fucking support right now. Okay. 
that's pretty much how Tina is, too. It's just always the same loop. You know, Grace is the only one besides you and me who actually are really trying. And I think with me being stuck here in Colorado, that's only making it hard, you know? I agree. Um, oh, are you in the trustee pod right now? So all those guys are like good guys and everything. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm having a brain freeze. Yeah. I mean, oh, I was going to ask, what movie did you watch uh, last night? I didn't watch really a movie. I was watching, um, oh, it was Godzilla. Oh. Last night, and then today I watched hockey. Oh, you guys watched hockey today? Yep. Like the Colorado Avalanche? I think it was Van... No, it was Chicago something. Jeez. I mean... Yeah. Uh, do you have a cellmate in this one? No, so kind of the room that's like right behind me, they have me sleeping on like a cot. Oh, so you don't even have a cell? I don't even have a cell. Free realm, yeah. Oh, are you sleeping on the floor? Jeez. I mean... Yeah. I that... mean, it's overbooked here, too. Like, the jail's overbooked, so I have a feeling that, like, they are going to get me out here soon. Yeah, I mean, they didn't even give you... I mean, that's bullshit, to be honest. It kind of is, but... I mean, at least at least people are being nice to you, I guess. Yeah. What was I gonna say? I think. I mean, the one thing that's been really helping is like just thinking of Grace. You know. Um, I was going to also say. Um, I know Grace is. Like I said, I'm trying to really focus a lot more on me and Grace and trying to fix that and try to move things forward with that. I agree. I mean, it's about time, everything. I mean, to be real, you've not, you haven't been locked up or you haven't been away from social media this long in about, I mean, how many years since you started, right? I mean, a good year, yeah. Everybody's panicking. Yeah. Oh no, I know everyone's panicking. I get like a million calls a day from people, and the Reddit's like spams. It's so it's a bunch of bullshit. I, oh wait, do you have a message? Oh, do you want to put your face in the camera? I can take a video for the Reddit if you want. Okay, here we go. I'll take a video for you. Daniel is safe, everyone. He's doing well. We need to bail him out if he can't get out by this Friday. But if he wants to say anything, here you go, Daniel. Yep, I would just say I agree with my friend here, Clark. If anybody can help bail me out if I'm not out by Friday, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, perfect. Oh, no. should be fine until Friday and I think I, I should get out so I mean yeah I mean, um is there anything you want to say to Grace I guess like uh well, if we can send a video to Grace I guess too or just give some encouragement Grace I would just say like I appreciate her being there for me and fighting along with me yeah and that you know that moderator slim jim he got arrested for like sexual assault or something so he's completely out of the picture i'm okay yeah that that piece of shit yeah yeah i mean About him, so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was just like sleeping with a bunch of minors or something, so he, he went to jail. Yeah. Um. Oh, dang, you got like two pieces of clothing on right now. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I 
don't have much more time because at 10, they do lock me down until 4 a.m. Damn, they wake you up early. Yeah. But, what I would say to Grace is I just, you know, I want her to keep her head high. Keep her head high, yeah. If she's got her arrested, it's the same bullshit I'm going through, you know? Does anyone have phones in there that you can use at all, or no? No. Jeez. It's, it's a hard life in there. Yeah. Dang, that, that guy looks like... Oh, shoot, he's coming behind you. Oh. Right oh. Yeah, that's open, so. yeah. I mean, I hope they're treating you nice and everything. And Do they still think you're a snitch, or...? Not... Not really... I mean, they think I'm, I mean, they've been joking around with me here, you know. Oh, yeah, there's another guy on the ground in the back, too, it looks like. Yep, so, there's two people out here, and, yeah. Jeez. Mm. But, yeah, I would say that, like, I want to give it maybe three, two hours, and I'll be out. What I would say about, yeah, let me check what day. It's about to be Thursday and about... Three hours. It's nine of fifty right now. Yep. So I would. It's money. It's. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, it's two hours. At, it's a. Uh, it's two a. Hours yeah, it's about. It's about to be one a.m. Yeah. Be one a.m. Um, I did also hear that, uh, like, Gavin, apparently he got arrested, too, in Colorado, and people found his mugshot, so I hope he's not in the same jail as you. I think he would. I mean, if he was. I mean, he would be probably in the special needs jail or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I would just say to Grace that, like, I'm trying to get me out and have on Friday, I think something else. So, Early. Yeah, should, okay. Um, I was going to say, I should play you, a, play you a song on here since the quality is better. Do you want me to play you a song now? right now just because time and everything uh Kanye dropped a new album but Kanye West yeah yeah he's got this new song that's like I don't know it's the world's going crazy right now yeah I mean it always does at this time of year too um I'm just glad you're safe and that no one's hurt you or anything cause I have heard in the Boulder County that there might be some gangs and people that, like, have gangs and stuff. Yeah. Um, other than that, what did you, have, did you eat, what did you have for dinner tonight? I had beans and, um, pretty much it for dinner. Um, I, I'm about to get ready for bed. Um, it is three more minutes. I think we have. I I do have a tip for you. This is what I learned when I was in juvie when I was a kid. If anyone if anyone fucks with you, you gotta beat the living shit out of them till they can't fucking do anything ever again to you. Don't let anyone mess with you, Daniel. Nope. So, yeah, just, I would tell Tina that, like, the odds of me getting out on Friday is, I want to say, 85%. 85%, okay. 85 or 90%. So, Besides that, just, uh, if you can show Grace the video and say I'm okay. 
and um, tell her that, like, because you know how to call me. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, I figured it out, and it's cheap. Video calls are way cheaper than anything else, to be honest. Yeah, tell Grace if she wants to set one up. Tell her that, like, she... No! <laughs> Fucking rip. I, I could tell you one thing. When I get out of here, I have some real terrible stuff that I gotta say about Arapaho. I'm going to expose them. I'm gonna be at war with Arapaho. Somebody actually, like, posted on the subreddit, do you think Daniel's having sex in jail? That yeah. That sounds about, um... Yeah, some guy said that he hopes you drop the soap or something. Throughout his time in jail, Daniel faced numerous challenges and indignities. He was forced to sleep on a cot in a crowded cell, share space with strangers, and contend with the constant fear of violence and harassment from other inmates. Despite these hardships, Daniel managed to find small moments of respite, such as playing cards with his cellmates, writing lyrics, and watching movies like Godzilla. And just like that, the end of February was over. He had pinned his hopes on being released by Friday, February 23rd, but knew that he would still face some challenges. On February 29th, in a sobering reminder of Daniel's troubled history, the long-awaited body camera footage from the Walmart incident during the dog arc from July of 2023 was finally released to the public. I got my dog dog now. Just relax for me, okay? I got my dog dog now. And then I got a text in the parking lot. Just relax. Just We're going to get figured out what's going on and then we can go from there. Okay? Oh, it's this one? Really, you can't even Okay, here, I don't want I don't want to hurt your arm, so. Until we get figured out, we're just detaining you, alright? Okay. We just relax. Okay. Three Tom 26. We've got him detained. Everything's calmed down. We'll start with the three we've got. Figure out what we got going on. There we go. Yeah, she's waiting. There we go. Would you be more comfortable sitting up? You can sit up. It works, right? What's your name, Bob? Daniel. Daniel, what's your last name? Larson. Take a couple breaths for us. The only way we're going to be able to figure out what's going on is if you can calm down and tell us, all right? So you need to take a few breaths and get to where you can talk about it. Daniel, right? what's your birthday, bro? Okay. All right. You want me to go talk to the book there? See what's up there? Uh, sure. Okay. All right. I'll start there. Okay. okay. Yeah, so I think it's like maroon shirt. She should be standing by the yeah, same side. <laughs> Yeah. Daniel, we got the paramedics coming to check on you, okay? All right, what's going on today? So, I just uh, I just bought a dog. Uh -huh. adopted a dog two days ago. And I'm, I'm a singer songwriter, and I got a massive internet fan base. Okay. And I just had some fan walk up to me over at the good times. Um, I was sitting outside. <laughs> And just walked up on me. Okay. Um, I was giving my dog water uh, because I was going to be staying at the Motel 6. I don't have a room yet. Okay. I was going to be staying at the Motel 6. I am currently homeless. Okay. So I don't have the money. Sure. Um, I pretty much spent all my money on the dog. Okay. I was going to introduce it as a, uh, as a guard dog uh -huh. for my popularity. Okay. And this person who I guess has a background in, because she told me, um, drove up the car, told me that she was a veterinarian 
and just randomly grab my dog from me okay. on leash. They have just immediately ran to the car while I was still sitting down. I grabbed my stuff by the time I got over to the car, just drove up. Okay. Um, with the dog. Okay. That I literally just spent all my money, not all my money, but 99.9%. Sure. And I panicked because I just went to PetSmart and I bought a hundred dollars worth of stuff. Almost. My deal with it said I just don't have a lot of money because I'm homeless. Where's all your stuff at right now? All I know is it's uh, in the entryway, kind of just right. Okay. And I panicked. Um, I panicked because I'm homeless. Um, my popularity, I wanted to guard dog. And it just, I was, I just freaked out. Um, I tried to come over here for help. Um, over to the Walmart. I was just camping. And, um, Is that why you were hitting yourself and all that? That's why I was hitting myself. Okay. Because I was camping. Okay. Um, I didn't mean to do at all what I was doing. I just came in and just me crying pretty much. And just, they told me to leave. I refused because I wanted to come in here and ask for help. Huh. By that time, two people took me. Two of the employees were just being overly aggressive, which freaked me out more. And I acted off here. Okay. Um, that's it. Right. Paramedics are here. We'll, uh, we'll talk a little more after they get a chance to talk to you. You said Daniel Larson? It's Daniel, yeah. Okay. And I didn't, I didn't well, put hands on anyone at first. Okay. This is Daniel. This is our self Okay. Um, he had, was started over an argument about someone taking or an incident where someone took his dog and he panicked. He didn't really know what he was doing. Okay. Daniel, can I get some vitals on you? Yes. And what's your date of birth? On March 1st, Daniel was released from jail, following a court hearing and sentencing to one year of probation, marking the end of the jail arc. However, it was clear that this was only a temporary reprieve. Daniel's underlying issues, including his mental health problems, lack of stable housing, and financial instability, remained unresolved. It would only be a matter of time before he found himself back in the crosshairs of the legal system, and at that moment, all that was certain was that his story wasn't over just yet, and that the world would be watching to see what happened next.